welcome back in the last session we have revisited the processes of involved in the central dogma of biology that means the flow of information from dna to proteins and the processes mechanism of various processes mechanism of various enzymes uh, have been discussed okay now we will discuss the amplification of a piece of DNA that if we have a small amount of DNA then how can we get uh, thousands and thousands of copies of this DNA. Now, remember copying of DNA in the biological system is called replication that is the copying of DNA, but here we are talking about something which is carried outside the living system in a test tube or ependorf, but utilizing the biological the utilizing the different components of the biological system that are involved in replication processes. We will show you how to do that, but this is uh, important to distinguish between the two processes. Replication is the process which takes place inside the organism living organism okay. and that is what is called in vivo process. And the amplification that we are talking about is carried out outside the living system and that will be called or that is called an in vitro studies. So, there are two processes one is called in, in vivo usually it is written in italics or the other is in vitro this is done inside the living system this is outside the living system. Okay. So, our topic of discussion today is that if we have a copy of a double strand DNA, then how can we make without going into the intricate machinery of the biological system, how can we make copies of this identical copies of this piece of DNA. Okay. Now, this is what is also called this process is called cloning. What is cloning? Cloning is basically making identical copy of anything that if you have a if you have a writing in a piece of paper and if you make a uh, if you scan it or if you Xerox it you will get the clone of your original system. Okay. So, cloning is nothing but making or creation of identical copy or copies. Now, this is this can be applied to a cell also that if you copy the cell if you can make if you have one cell particular cell and you make copies of that cell that will be that is also cloning, but that is cloning of the cells. If you say that DNA cloning if I say DNA cloning then basically you actually you are talking about that multiplying or amplification of a piece of DNA that is what is called DNA cloning. So, we are talking about DNA cloning in this case. Now, there are usually two methods uh, that are that are uh, followed. Okay. One is called polymerase chain reaction or PCR based method polymerase chain reaction this is also called PCR. And the other other is kind of semi you can call it semi in vitro process because at some point of time uh, the second method this is suppose 1 and this is 2 the second method utilizes at some point of time the, the cells in a living organism. So, it is kind of a semi in vitro analysis and uh, or technique. So, this is basically utilizing the uh, the living system. So, one is utilizing one is called PCR and the other is utilizing a living system we will discuss both and what are the steps of uh, of this amplification. So, what you do first suppose you have this piece of DNA and what I want is to copy suppose I, I want to copy this region only I do not require the full copy of the DNA 
but I want to copy the DNA of this region. Okay. So, what you have to do? First, you have to the steps are cutting the DNA at precise locations. So, you have to cut the DNA at precise locations, but the, the cutting should not involve the, the segment that you are interested to amplify that is number 1. This cutting is done by sequence specific endonuclease because it is done inside the DNA strand. So, it is called endonuclease also they are called the restriction endonuclease or the restriction enzymes. Maybe in earlier uh, discussion somewhere I mentioned about this restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes are endonucleases which recognizes uh, which recognize specific sequence and the beauty of this sequence is that they are all palindromic sequence. That means, if you read from 5 prime to 3 n whatever sequence you get, if you read the, the other strand from the same 5 prime to 3 prime n you will get the same or identical sequence. Okay. So, that is called that means, it has got a local C 2 symmetry that if you turn it upside down you will get the same thing, but remember this is local you cannot turn the whole DNA uh, this way and then get the same thing. It is just only a particular location this type of palindromic sequences are present and they are recognized by this restriction endonucleases also called restriction enzymes. So, they are also basically necessarily they are molecular scissors. Okay. Now, what you do after you chop this off what you need is a what is called a vector means you have to something which carries this gene or carries this DNA and then carries this DNA and then ultimately um, that carrier plus this DNA of interest that can be copied. Okay. So, this is not polymerase we are talking about in general what is done we are talking about the second one in the living uh, that means, amplification in living system we are talking about that in the beginning. So, you have the DNA piece of DNA this is your region of interest you cut the DNA from the two sides using restriction endonuclease or the restriction enzymes and then incorporate into a carrier carrier DNA it is a it is a carrier in, in this case I will talk about this carrier molecule this carrier and then the DNA is in becomes an integrated part of this carrier and then this carrier has a has a property which can be copied when that is put inside a bacterial cell. That means, if you have a bacterial cell and if you put this suppose this is your carrier. So, if you can put this carrier molecule inside the bacterial cell. So, when the bacterial cell grows, so you will have bacterial cell containing each bacterial cell containing this uh, this carrier uh, DNA hybrid. Okay. This hybrid or this is actually also called recombinant DNA when you because the carrier molecule is a DNA is made up of DNA and this is also DNA. So, this is what is called recombinant DNA. Okay. Again I just quickly uh, go through it that first you cut the uh, your DNA from the two sides without cutting the zone of interest and then you attach it to the carrier DNA which is by the way called a cloning vector. Okay. A vector is nothing but a delivery agent like we have vectors for malaria we know that what are the vectors of transmission of uh, one one organism uh, microorganism into the human body via the mosquito. So, the mosquito is a vector for malaria encephalitis all this. So, vector is nothing but uh, it is a delivery agent it takes up the a thing that I need to deliver and then brings it to the to the bacteria and they are uh, they are capable of self replication, but not by itself when it is put in the bacterial in a cell it is suppose it is a bacterial cell usually that is bacterial cell and then when the bacterial cell is it grows 
then each cell then the plasma this is uh, this cloning uh, this is now a recombinant DNA this recombinant DNA also uh, makes its own copy in different cells. And now the next thing if you want to isolate this piece of DNA you have to chop the bacteria the outside layer of the bacteria take this out this out this recombinant DNA and then utilize the same endonuclease to cut it off from the from the carrier molecule. So, I can now say that first you have the recombinant DNA containing your DNA of interest put it inside inside a bacterial cell grow isolate the recombinant R DNA recombinant DNA and then endonuclease will give you the DNA of interest copies of because you will get different multiple copies because from each cell you will get this uh, you will get this R DNA and from the R DNA you will get the copies of the DNA of interest. So, that is the uh, system which is usually utilized. Now, this has been largely replaced nowadays by or a very quick technique this is little bit slow technique. However, this has got one advantage is that if you can put it in the bacterial cell. Now, this cell you can preserve and whenever you need this recombinant DNA then you can you can ferment the bacterial bacteria which will make copies and then you can isolate the DNA. So, this is uh, this can uh, run in theory it can run forever because so long as you have the bacterial strain containing this recombinant DNA then you can always get hold of the copies of the DNA that you want. Okay. And um, the other important factor is that if these copies of if this DNA piece is ultimately after transcription and then translation it makes a particular protein which you are interested then you will all the, all the time you will get you do not have to break the cells because you are not interested in the DNA any longer. If you are interested only of the protein that this DNA makes then you just grow the cells and then isolate the protein from the from the cells or from the sometimes it is actually inside the outs, outside the cytosol that can also happen or in many cases you can lyse the cell separate the DNA isolate the protein and from the protein you purify and isolate your target protein. I okay. will give some example here uh, maybe right now I can give you that suppose the, um, we know that in diabetes there are two kinds one is insulin dependent another is insulin independent. So, some uh, people who are suffering from diabetes they have to take insulin that is the insulin dependent ones okay. and insulin where from the insulin is obtained earlier it was uh, obtained from the cow the bovine. So, it was bovine insulin that was the one which the diabetes people diabetes patients were using. Okay. Now, later on it was found that uh, it is it is not a very uh, good practice to slaughter a cow and then isolate the uh, isolate your insulin. First of all it is not human insulin there are some differences in the bovine insulin and human insulin although there are uh, good this is there is good um, homology homology means that the sequence of the amino acids in the protein are very similar. Okay. The highest homology the bovine has that is why the uh, you isolated you uh, the practice was that you isolate the insulin and that bovine insulin was used by the diabetes uh, patient suffering from diabetes which is insulin dependent. Later on uh, it was found that uh, if we can if we can inscribe suppose this is your insulin gene 
and if that be the case if you can take the insulin human insulin gene and put it into as a recombinant DNA put it inside a bacterial cell uh, via this cloning technology then what will happen these cells because it has got the insulin gene so when it grows it will make the insulin because it has got the insulin gene and now whatever insulin that are available in the market are all dependent on the uh, are all recombinant insulin okay and which is which is the also it makes the human perfect human variation human uh, variation of the insulin okay so you see that the this technique uh, is so uh, important because if you want a protein particular protein if you are interested usually the proteins are made in the cells very in very small amount okay if you want large amount of the proteins then what the your uh, target will be that you try to identify what is the gene corresponding gene of that protein and then take the gene and then put it as a recombinant DNA that means you uh, attach it to the carrier DNA or the, the vector DNA and then put it inside a bacteria. If you are successful in that then you can all the time you can get the protein because as the bacteria grows you will get the uh, it makes the protein and that is the modern day technology for any uh, any laboratory who are, the, who are doing uh, proteomics or uh, enzymology protein related uh, biology. Okay. Now, the questions to be asked here that uh, how do you make this recombinant DNA that is number one. The second is basically um, I think that is the most important because this recombinant DNA is basically what we are talking about that you have a vector DNA and you attach your your DNA of interest. Okay. How will you ensure that it has been attached? Because when you have this vector DNA, some of the vector DNA will remain as without any attachment from outside okay. and some of the vector DNA will be will be attached to this uh, external DNA. Okay. It is like very similar when I uh, talked about the catalytic antibodies there was this type of problem that some cells uh, some immortals, but they only are made up of cancer cells and some cells were there which are actually hybrid of the cancer cell and the uh, and other foreign cells. Okay. So, that is the spleen cells which are making the antibodies. So, they are also you have to select that which are the cells which are hybridoma and which are non hybridoma cells. Okay. Here which cells are uh, which DNAs are recombinant DNA and which DNA are only the vector DNA. So, you have to uh, identify that. So, that is very important and we will discuss that that how it is done before that. Uh, let us talk about little bit of this um, of this restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme I told you that it recognizes palindromic sequence. It recognizes palindromic sequence and uh, this is the palindrome A A G C T T and if you write uh, read from this side A A G G C T T okay, same. So, that is uh, a palindrome a 6 base palindrome and the enzyme that recognizes it it is called HIND 3. So, HIND 3 recognizes this sequence and it cuts at this point and that point. So, between the two A's the phosphodiester bond is is, is cut is clipped and that produces this type of fragments and this is what is called this that means there is 5 prime protruding ends okay, or overhang you can say that means the 5 prime overhang on this side and a 5 prime overhang on this side overhang means where there is no complementary strand present there is no complementary strand present. So, that is now this is what is called the sticky cuts sticky cuts means again if you uh, add these two then because this A matches with T this G matches with C. So, they will come and immediately sorry uh, they will. So, just if you think this is a block of wood kind of thing. So, then what you have is 
basically mm, sorry so this part goes inside and then because there is perfect matching here so it goes inside and then you can again do the ligation okay so you need a ligase to ligate these two uh, two pieces but this is what is called the the sticky cards because there is a recognition point there is overhang which recognizes each other so similarly there is this pst1 another enzyme uh, which recognizes ctgcag again this is a palindrome ctgcag okay so this also uh, this gives a 3 prime overhang 3 prime end is extended okay and there is another type of uh, cleavage that is called blunt cut and that is uh, done by eco eco r 5 eco r 5 recognizes g a t a t c again this is a palindromic sequence but it cuts it's a blunt cut it cuts straight away at this at the same point okay and that gives what are called blunt ends okay now it is it is easy to ligate these two because they have a recognition recognition uh, arm but here there is no recognition arm because it's a blunt cut but there are ways we are not going into that details but there are ways to also uh, stick to this to again join this together okay but that's a much more complicated ones if you have blunt ends on the other hand people try to have sticky sticky cuts because sticky cuts are easy to join just add the dna ligase they will join each other so this is what is the restriction uh, enzymes so, there are uh, many restriction enzymes that have been isolated and this restriction enzymes is present in bacteria and it is believed that the bacteria um, bacteria has evolved this restriction enzymes in order to protect themselves from the from virus from viral infection or other bacterial inf uh, actually viral infection. So, that these restriction enzymes cuts this external DNA and chops the DNA apart. So, that uh, it cannot infect the bacteria. Okay. Uh, I think this is what restriction enzymes perform highly specific DNA cleavage reactions bacteria evolved mechanism to protect themselves from viral infections. Okay. So, if this is the viral viral one uh, the viral DNA and if this is the if this is the uh, host DNA. Now, you can always ask this question that the sequence that is present in the virus that has to be a palindromic sequence and that has to be recognized by a restriction enzyme which is made by the host DNA, but the host DNA itself can have the same restriction uh, same site which is recognized by the same restriction enzyme. So, how does it really protect itself from the self cleavage? So, what it does one interesting uh, point is mentioned here that the bacteria labels the A the DNA self DNA uh, with the A adenine with a methylation. So, it does a methylation of the adenine and that that actually indicates or gives an instruction to the endonuclease that this is my self DNA do not cut it. So, better cut the other ones that means, the viral DNA which is not methylated where the A's are normal A's. So, that is the bacterial uh, way of identifying self and the external okay, just by putting the methyl group to the uh, to the host DNA that means, the bacterial DNA. think now we are talking about this um, the question is how do we identify the uh, the recombinant uh, the cells which are making recombinant DNA. Now, we did not talk about the vector yet that we said, said that it is a uh, it is a piece of DNA which has uh, which has replicability uh, we can replicate. Um, when it is put in a bacterial cell. Okay. So, this vector is usually what is called what is found to be what are called plasmid DNA. Plasmid DNA 
if the circular DNA, this is called plasmid DNA. Plasmid DNA are circular DNAs are circular piece of DNA and these are usually present, uh, they are not usually always present outside the, uh, it is not present in the chromosomal DNA, it is not a part of the chromosomal DNA, but it is actually present within the cytosol. Suppose this is the bacterial cell and suppose these are the chromosomal DNA that means containing all the information to make the proteins. Okay. Uh, so, in addition to the chromosomal DNA, the bacteria has developed this what are called plasmid DNA. The plasmid DNA are the um, circular, they are circular DNAs and they are they are not they are extra chromosomal DNA and bacteria evolved this plasmid DNA to confer resistance to different antibiotics. So, this is basically has evolved it offers resistance or gives resistance capability, resistance to what? Resistance to antibiotics, resistance capability. I can say antibiotic, I can add this word antibiotic resistance capability is provided in the plasmid. That means, the plasmid has a gene, if we go a little bit extrapolate this part that the plasmids are developed because of um, to give to confer antibiotic resistance to the bacteria. That means, the plasmids are making some enzymes which are destroying our antibiotic before the antibiotic action is shown. Okay. The beautiful character of this uh, means this is also very dangerous because this is the mechanism by which bacteria developed resistance, uh, but what was the problem if bacteria had the resistance gene uh, it is there in the chromosome the time taken from chromosome to express to the protein is much more than the plasmids. The plasmids can easily replicate, they have very good replicability and I said that is why they are vector and they can also very quickly infect other cells which do not have these plasmids. So, there could be cross um, infection of this plasmid to the bacterial cell which does not have this plasmid okay. and that is how the resistance can be spread into the entire bacterial population very quickly because they are they do not you do not have to unwind the entire chromosomal DNA in order to get the that resistance gene. It is actually present in the plasmid. So, plasmids are uh, having these characteristics that they have antibacterial resistance uh, genes present there and also and they and that could be multi there could be many genes one is acting against tetracycline another is acting against penicillin okay there are many antibiotics we have class so there may be different antibiotic genes resistance genes present in the plasmid and they can cross infect so they can also easily multiply multiply okay so in this um, technique what is i can show it here that uh, basically what is what happens here is that you take a plasmid which has got now plasmids can be synthetic also means now people there are different plasmids that are available which are made synthetically synthetic plasmids containing different uh, different genes expressing for different proteins. Okay. Like let us take this one, this is called what is called PBR322. This PBR322 plasmid has two genes, one gene confers resistance to the to the ampicillin, ampicillin is a penicillin and there is another gene which confers resistance to tetracycline. So, this is my starting vector. Okay. So, this vector is PBR322, if you do not remember the name follow the principle. The principle is that that it should have the plasmid should have two identifying to different kinds of genes expressing for two different proteins and that gives some the resistance to two different antibiotics, but there could be plasmids where there could be one antibody resistance gene, another could be a a gene for a protein which gives color. 
So, that is also po possible means there could be different variations of plasmids. So, this one let us talk about this one this has got two types of resistance tetracycline and ampicillin. Now, what has been found that this ampicillin resistance gene inside there is a site which is a restriction site for this enzyme PST 1 restriction endonucleus. So, that means there is a restriction site these sites where the restriction enzyme works are called restriction sites. So, this gene has a restriction site has a restriction site inside the ampicillin resistance gene. Okay. So, if you now treat this vector with PST 1 restriction enzyme. So, what will happen this will cut and this gives a sticky cut. I told you last time that PST 1 uh, gives a sticky cut, HIN 3 gives a sticky cut, ECO, ECO R 5 that gives a blunt cut, but this is a sticky cut. So, that cuts it uh, into this type of pieces open this is the ring is not closed. Okay. Now, if you have the foreign DNA suppose I have the foreign DNA like this and I am interested only in this part. Now, if there is a restriction site here suppose there is a restriction site here and a restriction site here these are recognized suppose by PST 1 PST 1. Okay. So, then what will happen then you will have pieces where the ends the restriction this after treating with the restriction site of the foreign DNA remember this part should not be disturbed at all. So, you are cutting at the little bit far on this side and little bit far on this side and then this will have similar kind of sticky ends. So, this will be the picture and then when you ligate that means, this part now can ligate with the protruding part or the over end part of this end and the other end can ligate with the over end part of the uh, of the vector DNA which is already treated with the same restriction enzyme. So, basically the principle is that you should use the same restriction enzyme to cut your external DNA and also to cut the uh, plasmid and the plasmid is cut in such a way that your ampicillin or any of the antibiotic resistance the marker these are called marker genes and these genes are cut one of the gene is cut inside. So, that this if you now express it in the bacteria. So, because these two are not joined so this is a disjointed gene. So, that will not express the 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 enzyme that destroys the penicillin ampicillin. Okay. So, that is the that is the um, reason that why you cut inside the ampicillin resistance gene. Now, you add this part this is your foreign DNA with the same sticky ends and this is your vector DNA with the same sticky ends. Now, when you add DNA ligase what will happen some of the vector will just again bind to each other because they can they can recognize each other. So, some of the this is the recombinant DNA. Now, some of the uh, vectors are they not taking any external DNA, but this external DNA can recognize that part. So, now some of the uh, vector I can show it here now some of the vector will remain like that remain as earlier. So, they just join with each other again, but some of the vector will can take this external piece of DNA suppose this is the external piece of DNA and then you complete the other part. So, that means you have a now you have a recon, this is recombinant DNA R DNA uh, sorry DNA and this is your just the vector DNA. So, you have now two types of DNA one is the normal earlier one that means this one and the other one is a vector DNA uh, is a recombinant DNA. The difference between the two is that see remember this was your ampicillin resistance gene and you have cut inside and then you have put a foreign DNA in the R DNA recombinant DNA. So, this recombinant DNA lacks the resistance against ampicillin. 
ampicillin okay because your gene is disjointed because this is the gene in, in between there is something foreign DNA. So, now what you do you take this um, all this recombinant DNA plus the original vector DNA and put it inside if that is uh, not difficult you can transform E. coli cells that is a particular type of uh, bacterial cells gram negative bacteria and you put this put this DNA. Okay. Some are some cells will have the vector DNA, some cells will have the recombinant DNA. Okay. Usually one vector one uh, plasmid in one cell. Okay. Now, you grow this in a agar plate where the bacteria goes can be cultured in a petri dish and this is containing tetracycline. So, when the bacterial cell uh, when this population is transferred here and they are allowed to grow, but the medium you have already added tetracycline. If you have added tetracycline remember tetracycline gene was not touched at all. So, it was there in the vector DNA and it was there in the recombinant DNA both. So, the, there will be bacterial colonies everywhere. Okay. All the two types of uh, bacterial cells one containing the vector DNA and the other containing the recombinant DNA both will grow here. Now, what you do you take another plate and two plates two agar plates one containing ampicillin and uh, see now uh, you take two plates one plate containing tetracycline and the other plate containing ampicillin and tetracycline. So, th this is uh, ampicillin and tetracycline both and the other is only tetracycline okay. tetracycline these are both are antibiotics. So, now what will happen to matching positions that means, if you are taking a bacterial colony from here you are taking it at the same position that means, you make a grid kind of thing you make a grid and then according to the x y coordinate like this bacterial colony is you place that here okay. and also you have the same you make the grid and then matching positions that means, the colonies are transferred from here to the same x y coordinate the matching positions you have to transfer. Okay. Now, what will happen here because you have here tetracycline only tetracycline. Uh, so, what will happen that when you transfer it so, tetracycline resistance means everything everything will grow again just to cross check everything will grow because both the vector DNA and the uh, recombinant DNA has the tetracycline gene, but when you develop it into ampicillin plus tetracycline then only the colonies only the bacterial cells which have got. Uh, only the vector DNA because it is the vector DNA which confers resistance to both ampicillin and tetracycline. So, the colonies that are growing here is containing only vector DNA. So, now you can realize that this colony is not present here that means, it is not growing. So, that means, this is a recombinant this colony must be having a R DNA. So, by this technique you can compare at different points. So, and then like this one it is shown here this is not there. So, if it is not there that means, this colony must be a recombinant DNA. So, that is how now you take the colony and then grow in another uh, media uh, grow in uh, in a suitable medium and then you get the copies of the when the bacteria grow. So, you get copies of the recombinant DNA as I told you now it is if you are interested only in the DNA then isolate the DNA, but if you are interested in the protein that this R DNA is uh, making then you isolate the protein, but in both the cases you have to uh, lyse the bacterial cells and then separate the DNA nucleic acids and then isolate the protein of interest. So, this is the uh, this is I told you this is kind of a semi in vitro because initially the reactions with the restriction enzymes are done in in vitro and then that is transformed into the 
bacterial machinery and then after that it is in vitro uh, in vivo uh, technique. Okay. So, this is one way or uh, it is a beautiful way. Now, many of the problems have been solved that recombinant DNA technology can uh, generate or give uh, copies of DNA as well as uh, the proteins that are the most interesting aspect uh, that carries out all the uh, reactions that you want. Okay. So, a very useful technique which was developed in the I think the early 1980s this recombinant DNA technology was made available and now it has become a routine technique in any molecular biology lab. Okay. The next session we will discuss the entirely in vitro method and that is called the polymerase chain reaction. So, the second technique we first discussed now we will go back to the first technique which is the polymerase chain reaction. Thank you.